What's up, everybody? It's the Digital World Podcast. And what I'm going to show you guys today is, I mean, I was looking at all these news articles and I was like, oh my word. What do we have today? And, and this is, it's, it's all coming together. If you haven't noticed, these measures that come in right before winter are very, very draconian. And it's getting worse each time. If you compare it to what it was like last winter and this winter, what you're seeing happening across the board is very scary. Now, I'll start off with this. Kind of keep it lighthearted, to, you know, in these troublous times. But I was thinking maybe I should do the same this weekend. <laughs> I got a good laugh out of this one. Take me somewhere expensive. And then here's the grocery store. That one was pretty good. Thought you guys might enjoy that. Now, look at this. It says, Latvia is going to ban lawmakers from voting who don't have the medicine. It's from Reuters. Okay, I'm not going to go into the article because we have a few other things to cover. But here it says, Latvia's parliament voted on Friday to ban lawmakers who refuse the medicine from voting on legislature and participating in discussions. It has one of the lowest medicine rates in the European Union and was the first in the bloc to reimpose a lockdown this autumn as a surgeon, the surveillance sickness threatens and overwhelms its health systems. Okay? So we see that. Now, we see here. In Slovenia, we see drivers must present their pass in order to refuel their cars. Folks, just get an idea of where these things are going. This is just the beginning. Once everyone complies with having, you know, the green pass or whatever they want to call it, this is what's going to happen. It says most petroleum suppliers, including the you. Guyana Base Patrol, which operates the largest number of patrol stations in the country, are rigorously applying the new restrictions. They are adopted on Saturday, activating fuel dispensers only after a driver presents a certificate showing that they have recovered. And this is where it begins. If you have recovered from the cervasic sickness, sickness, have the medicine, or have a negative result. Okay. And this is just the beginning. Can you imagine? One day, you're going to walk into the store and they're not going to allow you in without presenting your medicine record. Okay, and you know what I mean by that. This is, yeah, they might say, no, you need to have a a, a negative result or you need to have recovered from it, etc., etc. But soon it's going to be only the medicine record. And that's what it's going to be. And this is just a small step. Folks, you got to uh, wake up and smell the roses. And, and in this case, they're not roses. It's a pile of dump out there. It literally is a, a pile of dump that's just been sitting there for days and no one picks it up. It's like you leaving your your dog, leaving their poop all over the floor and you just let it sit and fester there for days. <laughs> that's literally what this come on we have to realize and the fact that we're not talking about it here in the states and standing up for freedom is concerning now you might say well all these countries are having mass protests and that's good because they're standing up for freedom right i know some of you have commented about it i'm going to show you a document that's going to blow your mind right now because it seems like this is what they want people to do. And I know, based on some of your guys' comments, uh, you guys have said, well, maybe this is what they want to do. And, and you guys are wondering, well, is it or is it not? Check this out. Here is what seems to be a document from, uh, let me see here, the prime minister, the health minister, Brad Hazard for from Australia has just signed an exemption order allowing the unmedicated Australians to attend the Freedom Rally at Hyde Park this Saturday. 
And these people are acting, oh, this is such a good idea, right? This is a win for the people. Not so fast. Look, since when is, is, you know, people's thinking is so backwards. Since when is standing for freedom something that's permissible by the state? Here, look at this. Despite Clause 2.22 of the order, an unmedicated person can gather in a group of more than two persons, but only for the purpose of attending the rally, subject to the following. And they give the rules. If you're over 12 years of age, you must wear a mask at all times, unless you're eating or drinking. Oh, because the virus pauses, right, when you're eating or drinking. <laughs> uh, and then the unmedicated person must take reasonably practical steps to remain one and a half meters from any person other than a member of their own household. <laughs> An unmedicated person must not attend the rally if they had symptoms of yada, yada, yada. Okay, and here it says, Brad Hassard, Minister for Health and Medical Research. This is from the New South Wales government. Since when do you need permission to stand up for freedom? Now, it's interesting. I don't know if this individual is for freedom and liberty. I don't know. There could be some variables at stake or uh, uh, some variables that I may not know about from this individual. However, you have to question whether this is what they want you to do. And by this stating that people are allowed to go to that rally, only if they're going to the rally, right? And they won't be har harassed or assaulted by whatever police force. It makes you question. And this here is, is more evidence to show that this is what they want people to do, to go out there and protest. So that's why there's this quote by Mark Twain that says, when you find yourself on the side of the majority, it's time to pause and reflect. Don't follow the masses. Now, Ireland, they're going to reimpose their lockdowns. Everyone has a midnight curfew, and 93% of the adults are fully medicated. <laughs> Folks, this is not about health. It's not. And I'm going to show you a chart. This is from the Rebel Capitalist. If you guys don't watch, I'd highly recommend great content. From George Gammon. Here is Iceland, right? And here he received this email because he's uh, signed up. I forget the individual he's signed up with to receive these kind of emails. And this is in Iceland. I think they're one of the high, they have the highest rates of medicine, quote unquote, I think in the world or something like that. It says, June 1st, June 1st uh, it says, how Iceland beat the cervicus sickness. Then November 20, so black is the amount of cases that have gone up, right? And, and orange is the number of medicines that people have taken. Okay, it says, how Iceland hammered the, the cervicus sickness with signs November 20th, right? Then we see Fauci with 50% medicated. I feel fairly certain you're not going to see the kind of surges we've seen in the past. This is on June 3rd. Look what's happening. Right? These are the medicine rates. And these are the cases. Okay. Shortly after, when we saw this huge increase in medicines taken by the people, see a huge spike in cases. Then it drops, and now we're going parabolic. This is in Iceland. So there's no correlation at all between the medicine and bringing down cases. And the cervicus sickness is going to be, it's, it's essentially like the seasonal flu. Where it's just going to do what it's going to do. But these medicines don't seem to be having any kind of impact 
on that. And the da- that's what the data is showing you. And based on everything I've shown you, a lot of this is not about health. And the sooner you start to realize that, the sooner you'll be prepared for what's coming. Because this is a, a, a train full speed ahead, downhill, and it's, it's, it's coming down hard. So I hope this episode has brought you some value. Um, if this is your first time watching this, consider liking and subscribing for more of this content. Uh, let me know your guys' thoughts. This is the Digital World Podcast, and I'll see you in the next episode.